Hi, my name is Doris and I play the violin. Hi, I'm Jessica and I play the viola. Hello, my name is Alex and I play the cello. And hi, my name is Evan and I play the bass. What do all of these instruments have in common? Well, they're all part of the strings family of the orchestra. The strings family is the largest family in a symphony orchestra, making over 60% of the players. The orchestra needs so many of us because our individual instruments aren't quite as loud as a trumpet or a flute or a crash cymbal. All string instruments have a very similar design. The decorative curved part at the top of the instrument is called the scroll. Just below that are four wooden pegs that attach the strings to the top of the instrument. The pegs are used to tune the instrument's four metal strings. Tightening the strings makes a higher pitch, while loosening the strings makes a lower sound. Next is the neck, which connects the pegs to the body of the instrument. The fingerboard is the surface on top of the neck where the fingers press down on the strings. The body of the instrument is hollow, allowing the sound to resonate. A wooden post called a sound post is located inside the body of the instrument. The two curved sections carved out of the body are called F holes because they are shaped like cursive Fs. These help the sound resonate from the instrument. The bridge helps support the strings while also transmitting vibrations from the strings into the body of the instrument. The tailpiece is a triangular shaped piece of wood where the other end of the strings attach. Below that, many violins and violas have a chin rest at the base of the instrument where you can rest your chin while playing. The cello and bass have an adjustable end pin that allows the instrument to rest on the ground. In addition to the instrument itself, we also need a bow, which is a wooden stick strung with horse hair. The hairs are rubbed against the strings, which makes them vibrate, and that is what produces the sound. The length of the string determines the pitch we hear. The shorter string produces a higher pitch, and a longer string produces a lower pitch. The fingers on the left hand control the length of the string by pressing down on the strings. String instruments can also be played without a bow. This technique, called pizzicato, involves plucking the strings with your right hand to produce the sound. The violin is the smallest instrument in the strings family. Because of that, it has the shortest strings and makes the highest sounds. There are more violins in an orchestra than any other instrument. I like to think it's because we're the coolest, but it could also be because you never hear us over the brass if there were any fewer. My favorite part of playing the violin is getting to play melodies that remind me of birds flying. I wish I could fly up high in the sky and the closest I can get to that feeling is when I play my violin. The viola is a few inches longer than a violin and therefore can play slightly lower, four notes lower to be exact. Although they are close in size, the violin and viola have different sound qualities. While the violin is often described as having a bright sound, the sound of a viola is more dark and mellow. My favorite thing about the viola is how expressive it is, like in this excerpt from the Roman Carnival Overture by the French composer Berlioz.
The cello is even larger than the violin and viola and produces even deeper sounds. Its deep low sound comes from the size of the instrument. In fact, the cello is so big that we can't put it up under our chins like a violin or viola, so we use an end pin to rest the instrument on the ground. Cellos often play the bass line in an ensemble, which helps define the structure and tempo of a piece of music. But we're also very good at playing the melody. My favorite thing about playing the cello is supporting my colleagues in the ensemble with a rich, full sound. The bass is the largest member in the strings family. You may have heard different names for this instrument. Bass, string bass, double bass, upright bass, stand-up bass, acoustic bass, and there's more. But all of those names refer to the same instrument, which is most commonly called a bass or a double bass in the orchestra. And why double bass? Well, we often double the cello part, playing the same notes as them, just an octave lower. So if they're playing this pitch, we play this pitch. And in order to get a full octave lower than their lowest note, I have this thing called an extension, which allows me to play really low. What I love about the bass is it is a really versatile instrument, meaning it can do a lot of different things and play a lot of different styles of music. So you'll hear this instrument in the orchestra, of course, but also in rock bands sometimes, certainly in country music and blues bands, and very often in jazz groups, you'll hear a bass. So let me first play a little fun uh, classical waltz for you. This is by Dragonetti. <laughs> And here is a little B-flat blues. Thanks for watching and for learning about the strings family of the orchestra with us. For more videos like this one, visit kcsymphony.org.